Happy Saturday, everybody. It is Bernie and Jill, and today we're talking about ChatGPT, Microsoft Bing, and what it means to you and your digital marketing. Stay tuned. All right, Jill, we are here today to talk about the uh, all-powerful uh, ChatGPT, yeah. AI, all this different stuff that's going on with it. People are using it to decode slang words. People are using yeah. it to write content. People are using it for literally everything. Yeah. Um, Tell us about ChatGPT. Yeah, so ChatGPT, actually, when it came out around Christmas time, I was asking it a lot of interesting questions just to see what it was going to say. I asked it, like, how to bake a cake. Yeah. I asked it what I should get my husband for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I asked Did it say Legos? <laughs> no, it didn't Shout say Shout out, Flair. <laughs> um, it didn't say Legos, but it gave me a lot of really good options. And then I asked it to write me a poem. I asked it who it thought should be the next president, and it does not comment on political things, apparently. Wow. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And then um, Microsoft had a surprise event last week and yep. basically said that Bing is back and chat GBT is integrated into the search engine of Bing. Holy shit. Yep. Yeah, talk about a, uh, a bombshell, right? So that's big news, obviously. Uh, Bing being able to incorporate chat GBT into its search because everybody knows that Bing and everyone else is way second fiddle to everything that Google's doing with YouTube and all, right? Yep. So what kind of impact does this kind of chat GPT integration have for search? So basically they're trying to compete with Google. Yeah. Like Google has like 94% of all search engine ownership and yeah. they're trying to take back some of that from Google. Good luck. Um, now chat, <laughs> chat GPT is supposed to have more human like responses. Um, and it's supposed to be faster as well. Um, instead of everything on Google where as soon as you go to Google, like what do you see? Like 90% of the page, it's ads, yeah. right? Yep. So they're trying to eliminate ads and just have more of a human like response and the conversational response versus just being ads and Google kind of dictating to you what they think you should go to. So we should really be thinking, so this is really like, like thinking about search differently, especially as a searcher, right? Yeah. To have a more conversational approach because usually you're just like, you type it in, mm -hmm. this is what I want, is it here? Yes, great. Whereas like I, th I think, you know, chat GPT might be able to customize it then to like what you're saying, right? Specifically in the yeah. different ways you say it. Yeah, and I think the biggest question is, is are those responses or are those replies from chat GPT going to be accurate? Yeah. So we don't know, time will tell, but that will be one of the interesting things to see how chat GPT changes how we potentially search and the accuracy of how we search. Yeah, because they're still testing it, right? I don't think it's available to everybody yet. Um, it's not available to everyone. They are still testing it, but it is available to some people. Now, Google has a big response where they are coming out with their own AI chat yep. GPT called Bar. Bard. Bard. It is not. Google said, hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's not available to the public. It's coming in a few weeks, but it'll be interesting to see how that plays out with ChatGPT. Yeah, I wonder what the focus group was like at Google when they were like, what should we name it? How about Bard? How about Bard? Or like Shakespeare? That like, yeah, who said that's a great name? Let's I don't know. Name it's it definitely Bard. memorable. Bard? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, but that's not everything, right? There's a couple more things, especially with like how it impacts search. Yeah. I think what's interesting is really what the search engines are, are showcasing to us is how younger people tend to search. Like not everybody is turning to Google. Like yeah. we see that younger generations really turn to TikTok. They turn to Instagram. They're searching on those platforms for videos. They're searching on YouTube for how to's like they more so watch things versus just searching for things and getting a list of websites to go to. Um, so at least both companies know that evolution is necessary. So it's important for us to consistently be thinking about that as well in terms of the markets changing in terms of who we're going after. Yeah, especially in terms of like who, like what, like you just said with your markets, like if we have to change like how things are kind of optimized, right, for search, usually it's like if it's good for Google, it's good for Bing, right? But now you might have to think a little bit differently about how you're approaching your Bing optimization and how you're kind of put things together on Google in terms of like being visible in search, but that's a little bit down the road, but yeah. still something to keep in your mind. And it, it'll be interesting to see how things play out. But one thing that I would recommend for business owners to keep in mind is advertising on Bing or thinking about Bing. Um, at, if this really plays out well from a chat GBT standpoint, um, thinking about making your presence more well known on Bing. Of course, when we optimize for SEO, we do it across all search engines, but maybe you have an agency that doesn't do that. Um, and if that's the case, we would love to speak with you, but also thinking about advertising down the road as well as yeah. we see how this revolutionizes things. 100%. If you don't have your Bing or anything else, you know, ask them about your Bing places, take a look at it. If you need, like Jill said, if you need help, 
with any of this, you have some more questions, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Jill, anything else for the people today? That's it. Just know that Bing is back and keep your eye on it. Bing is back, everybody. We'll see you next Saturday.